is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. Yo, so excited about tonight's show. Welcome to it. This is ZFM Sport on a Thursday, Throwback Thursday. The show that's short, sharp and sweet. The show that brings you closer to your sports stars. My name is Sean Tafrenika. I'm the producer of ZFM Sport. I hope you're staying at home and being safe. Tonight on the show, we caught up with your captain, my captain, the Zimbabwe rugby captain, Hilton Mudariki. We caught up with Hilton earlier today to find out everything, where it all started for him to where we are going so let's get straight to it Hi, I'm Jesse Creel, Springbok and Blue Bulls backline player you are listening to ZFM Sports you know the Zimbabwe Sabres surprised everyone by winning the Victoria Cup last year and if you're wondering what the Victoria Cup is it's a rugby tournament contested by four African nations Kenya, Uganda, Zambia and Zimbabwe it's similar to if I can draw a parallel um, think of the South African Springboks and how they play Argentina, Australia and New Zealand in the Rugby Championship. This is our version of such a tournament. Now that cup victory last year was indicative of the path that the Sables are on. It's a very young team with lots of talented players and their aim is to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2023. The leader of that group is Hilton Mudariki. But where does the story begin for Hilton? I understand that we could have lost him to cricket. So let's find out about his childhood. Growing up, I was lucky enough to attend some fantastic schools. Um, I started off at the Heritage here in Zimbabwe, and I did my grade one to grade five there. I met a gentleman by the name of Patrick Scott Martin, who is a parent, and he is the one who introduced me to sport. Um, I was really good friends with his son, and I believe this is where my love for sport started. I wasn't a guy that really enjoyed being indoors in the classroom, um, you know, I enjoy being outdoors and being active. And I, you know, tried my hand out at every single sport that I possibly could. And at Heritage, this is where I feel like um, my love for sport started. Then I, after grade five, I moved to St. John's and did my grade six and grade seven. Um, the move was mainly because a lot of my friends were moving from Heritage going to St. John's. So that transition from one school to the other was very easy because I, I knew a lot of guys that were, that were heading over there. And it was great because we, you know, we, we played sport together and um, being in the same grade, it just made it so much easier. And I thoroughly enjoyed my, my two years at St. John's and I made some fantastic friends who, um, are still, who I'm still really close to to this very day. Um, so that was really awesome. And then after doing my grade seven, I decided to make the hard, um, the hard move to South Africa. Uh, to do my high schooling there. I went to a fantastic school called Michael House and this is probably the best decision that I ever made for for myself and my career um, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Um, it was very difficult to adjust to that move initially um, but after a couple of weeks and, and, and settling in, I, I loved it. I, I'm so, so blessed and so lucky to have attended such an amazing school. And this is where I feel like my my sporting career really developed. And this is where I made the decision that I wanted to be a sportsman um, when I when I was done. Um, after school, I wanted to be a sportsman. That's what I wanted to do. Um, in high school, obviously, you can't obviously you didn't have as much time as you had when you were junior school to try out every single sport. So I decided to focus on cricket in the first term, rugby in the second term, and then the third term was. Um, soccer season played a little bit of soccer but mainly focused on uh, my preseason for cricket and then the fourth term where cricket again um making the decision to to uh as to which sport i wanted to do was very difficult for me because i love both sports but um 
I was probably a lot more talented in cricket than I was in rugby. And this was what I was going to do up until my final year of school. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my cricket. Um, I captained um, sides right the way through to to, to matric. Um, I was the second youngest captain in the school's history. Um, I played Natal schools cricket um, throughout all the age groups. I captained Natal schools cricket throughout all the age groups. So, you know, if you look at my history with cricket, one would have said automatically that um, I'm going to head the cricket route. But then my love for rugby just became massive in my final year. Um, I played um, first team rugby. I made the Natal schools team as the starting scrum half. Um, earned a contract to go to Western Province after that so you know I decided to go the rugby route and it's and it's definitely a decision that I will not regret um, especially where where I am today there have been many coaches um, that I've had throughout the years that have played a part and I believe every single coach has played a major part but if I can single out one or two coaches um, I would have to say Reino Combrink who was our director of rugby at Michael House he helped me make the transition from fly half, which I played from under 14, under 15, under 16, to 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 move to scrum half. Um, he saw that there was a um, a bit opportunity for me to to make the first team and to make Natal schools in that position. So he helped me with that transition in terms of working on my passing, working on my kicking, and um, now I must give credit to him for for you know where I am. And then, you know, the coaches that I've had um, throughout the years um, here in Zim, uh, Coach Brandon Dawson, who's still my coach to this to this day, who gave me my first cap as a Sable. Um, coach uh, Gilbert Yamtamba, who is the current Sevens coach, who gave me an opportunity to play Sevens. Um, I remember my first year out of school, I didn't actually play for the Cheetahs, but um, I was involved in a training camp with them um, in the UK, and that's where I kind of got my first taste of of sevens rugby so i've had a lot of coaches um, and a lot of people that have played a huge part in my in my development in my career to this very day you know it wasn't long before hilton's talent caught the eye of selectors and it became one of the first names on the team sheet things really took shape for hilton during the super sport challenge last year leading up to the victoria cup being a part of the Sables has been the biggest honor and privilege and I'm, I've been so lucky enough to have done it 28 times to date. Um, you know, being in a sport like rugby where, you know, the next game is not guaranteed for you, um, I've tried to make sure that I've put in a performance that I can be proud of or that the people of Zimbabwe can be proud of every single time I've stepped onto the field. Um, I've just tried to make sure that I leave the jersey in a better place. The Sables has so much history and, and a lot of legends have worn the jersey before me. So um, just being a part of that is is massive for me. And then to eventually captain the team last year um, after our captain uh, Brandon Mandivenga went down th- uh, with injury was amazing for me. Um, it's not something that I that I ever thought growing up that I would you know captain my country. But when... Um, Coach Brendan Dawson asked me to do the job. I could not say no. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege to to have led Zimbabwe six times, and um, you know I'm just really lucky and blessed that you know the coaching staff and the management um, were able to trust me and to put their faith in me um, to do the job. And um, it was brilliant. I, I enjoy the, the the leadership pressure. Um, I enjoy um, leading and. And no, it was just awesome. I really, really enjoyed enjoyed that time as, as captain. My first cap came against Namibia in 2013. Um, it was a very, very tough game. Um, you know, proper test match against the quality side. And um, I remember we went down in that game, but uh, just that feeling of putting on the jersey for the first time, um, you know, just realizing all the sacrifices that have been made, you know, the hard work that you know, I've had to put in in order to get to that very moment. Um, and then just to realize that moment was pretty special. I remember the night before um, I received my jersey for the very first time in the jersey presentation. I remember just going back to my room, you know, just sitting on the edge of my bed and just looking at it. And, you know, that's when you just realize that, you know, all the hard work has paid off. And that's and that's a motto that I, that I live by, um, you know, that hard work always pays off. So, you know, I've been really, really blessed to, to have been given the opportunity to play to play for the Sables.
you know, last year we were involved in the Supersport Challenge, um, a domestic tournament in South Africa. And, um, you know, that was a really, really tough tournament for us, but a very good one. Um, we went there with a very young side. I mean, the coaches, um, you know, experimented with positions, with players. And and I feel like, you know, that did a lot of good for us. Even though results didn't go away, um, I feel as players, we developed a lot. We learned what it was like to, to play against quality opposition on a week-to-week basis. Um, the facilities that we had, the the way the structures were run, you know, credit must go to our team manager Jason Moritz and the coaching staff, Coach Tonderai, Coach Brendan Dawson, for for putting that all together, um, and the sponsors that we had for for putting that all together. It was absolutely brilliant. I think we, as players who had not been in a professional environment, we managed to get that taste of being in a professional environment where everything was was given um, to you uh, with fantastic facilities. We had um, physios, we had video sessions, we had um, masseuse who came in to, to help the boys out. Um, you know, whenever we had sore, sore bodies after tough games, um, supplements were all there. So it was brilliant. It was a fantastic, fantastic um, setup that we had there. And I believe that that was a start of something great, which we eventually took into uh, Victoria Cup, um, where we were very successful. Uh, playing at that level um, day, uh, week in, week out, and then coming into Victoria Cup, uh, we managed to, you know, take our learnings from uh, Super Sport Challenge and then bring it into Victoria Cup. And I feel like that is where we're very successful. And credit must go to the coaches for for instilling faith um, in in the young squad that we had, and um, you know, for the guys to go out there and express themselves and to play that brand of rugby that that we know we can play. It's obviously a work in progress. There's still a lot of work to be done. Um, obviously, with um, what's currently happening globally around the world now, it's going to be difficult to to um, to carry that momentum that we had from Victoria Cup uh, into this year because we don't know when we um, when we start playing again. But it's important that we remember what we've learned from last year and then make sure that we bring it into this year um, when we start playing again. I've had some awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, moments um that i'll cherish for a lifetime like i said my first my first test cap was a moment that i'll never forget um captaining the country in both sevens and fifteens um is uh, you know moments that i'll never forget and i've been very very fortunate and lucky enough to have played with some quality players um so you know i'm really really um lucky to be in a position that i'm in right now under Hilton's leadership, the Sables were certainly on the up, but like everything else, the COVID-19 pandemic put things at a standstill. However, we have seen videos of professional athletes finding innovative ways to stay in shape and to use this time wisely, and Hilton is certainly one of them. Yeah, lockdown life has been has been uh, challenging. It's had its um, it's had its challenges, but. I think the government have done a a very good job in making sure that we attack this thing early by enforcing the lockdown. Um, That way, able to control the spread of this virus. Um, So credit must go to the government for stepping in early uh, before you know things got out of control. But yeah, as a professional sportsman, it's been really tough. um, You know, being at home because we're so used to a set routine and and uh, training every day. Um, training with your teammates as well so it's it's been tough to to get used to um, but you know a lot of people have had to make adjustments um, so we've also had to do the same um, so my, my days and how I like to stay fit is that I've kind of put together a little gym that I that I'm training um, uh, our strength and conditioning coach um, Danny Hondo sends us programs weekly uh, so we're just following those programs and I'm getting a couple of other programs. So I'm kind of putting everything in together um, to just make sure that I'm staying in tip top shape um, because we don't know when this thing is going to end. We don't know when we're going to be back playing. So it's important as players to to make sure that we, you know, we're staying in, in top top shape and we're staying fit. And sometimes it does get hard because you, you know, you tend to lose a bit of motivation because you, you're like, well, what am I actually training for? Uh, when you can't really see exactly what you're training for but um, you know it's been great um, you know to test ourselves it's almost like a mental test um, and uh, it's been great for me I've thoroughly enjoyed it in terms of um, what my day looks like I've tried to make sure that it um, 
I try to stick to a routine so it kind of looks like how it would on a you know on a normal day um, I've bought in a couple of things that um, that I'm doing now um, because if you look at it I've haven't really had a break in the last couple of years that I've been playing because I've gone from a club season to um, to super sport challenge straight into internationals into a seventh season and then back into a pre-season um, so I actually haven't had any time off where you know some guys that I play club rugby with um, would have had uh, you know some time off I would still be playing rugby so this has almost been a blessing in disguise that you know I've had some time off, some time off and I've managed to be at home I think this is the longest that I've been at home in a while so it's it's been great to you know just to be around home to be around family um, but in terms of my day I'll uh, I wake up early um, nice early start I'll get some yoga in that's something that I've started doing um, just to to help with my body and help with the recovery um, you know I've got a, a stretching session in there as well and then I'll get a get my first weight session in, uh, in. so I normally do that um, you know around eight nine o'clock in the morning um, get some breakfast in uh, you know do some reading do some work um, and then later on in the day I'll have my my running session or or I'll be on the bike so I've always tried to make sure that I mix it up uh, keep things interesting just so that I don't um, so that I don't get get bored I've learned a lot uh, during this period and I think it's given me time to reflect I think you know when you're involved in sport and you're in a, in a sports career you know things just go quickly there's so much happening that you actually don't have a lot of time to just sit and reflect so um, this period has been great for me to to kind of take a step back to see where I'm at and to see you know the things that I that I want to um, that I want to work on and want to want to improve so in terms of analyzing my game I've had a lot of time to do that uh, I've looked at uh, games that I've played in the past um, seen where I, you know where I could be better um, things that I need to improve on I've been in constant con- consultation with the coaches about what they expect from me and what I as a player can improve on um, I've also had the opportunity to to uh, look past rugby um, obviously it's not a career that's going to last forever um, so it's, this period has given me a chance to to look at a few business ideas that I'm um, trying that I'm hopefully getting into um, hopefully after this COVID-19 um, you know we'll be able to to launch them and to get involved in that and I'm really really excited about that um, about life after rugby and it's, it's been great that I've had this opportunity to to sit and, and think and to talk to a lot of people um, you know like I said a lot of people are busy and you don't get that opportunity to um, to connect with other people so this has been great in terms of reaching out to people discussing and learning a lot of new things and I've thoroughly enjoyed it like I told you earlier, the main aim for the Sables is to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2023. Now, Hilton understands this task as one of the men who's going to be leading from the front. My goals and aspirations for Zimbabwe Rugby is just to see Zim Rugby back on the world stage. I think it's been a very, very long time since we were there. I think 1991 was the last time that we went to a World Cup. And I truly believe that we have the squad to do that uh, to go to that 2023 World Cup but obviously it's going to require a lot of work right the way from the top all the way to us as the players you know we need to come together with that common goal of reaching France 2023 and it's going to take a lot a lot of planning a lot of um, a lot of support but if you look at last year it showed that with planning with financial support what we can achieve we managed to put a trophy in the trophy cabinet after a very long time and we managed to uh, place you know some really really good rugby and that's what I would like to see them rugby we want to see um, games being sold out a lot of people you know talking about Zim rugby and I think a major thing for me is to bring that pride and um, you know that pride and belief back in Zim rugby that's that's the main thing for me I want to be able to to for young kids to be like oh, I want to be a sable when I grow up you know a lot of a lot of the kids now are you know we're looking at, at South Africa and I was a point unfortunately I was one of those kids at a point in time where I was like I want to wear the green and gold of South Africa but we want to play an attractive brand of rugby and bring Zimbabwe rugby up so that the little kids that are in in junior school now in high school are like you know what I want to be a sable when I when I grow up and that's where we need to be at it's going to take a lot of hard work um 
but I feel that with um, with the right structures in place, we will be able to get there. In terms of what we can expect, oh, it's you know it's it's like I said, it's a work in progress. We we need to work hard as the players, and we have all bought into what the coach um, um, the coach's vision and what they believe in. I remember the first time we got together and we sat down. That was that was the chat from the from the very first from the very first meeting that we had that France 2023 was our goal and we were going to get there. You know, a lot of people might have lost a lot of hope in Zimbabwe rugby, um, but I can tell you now that a lot of guys, a lot of the boys that are involved now are putting their hands up. We can see a lot more guys showing interest, guys from all over the world, and that's what we want. We want to have as competitive side as possible so that. You know the coaches have a lot of headaches in, in picking the team, and that's exactly what we want. So, you know, a lot of I think a lot of belief is starting to come back into Zim rugby with with a lot of players now putting their hands up, which is exactly what we want. Um, the goal, like I said, is France 2023. We want to play in that World Cup. We want to be there. Um, I think you know a lot of the years gone by, we've been there and thereabouts. We've we've fallen short, but. Now, because we've we started early and we started preparing early, I think this can stand us in good stead going forward. Um, in a sense that we have a settled squad. Obviously, it's still going to build a lot of a lot of guys are going to be coming in and out, which is great for for us and us and our depth. So, I mean, it's important that us as the players do the job that we need to do. We know that the guys at the top, um, Mr. Aaron Johnny and his team, are going to do the very best that they possibly can for us. And it's important for us as the players to make sure that we're putting in the work even during this difficult time. So I'm really excited about the future. I'm really looking forward to it. And I just rally all Zimbabweans to get behind the Sables, uh, to get behind the Cheetahs. We, um, you know, we're putting in a lot of work and we want to make this country proud. We've seen what sport can do. I mean, if you just look at South Africa and them winning the World Cup, you can see how sport can unite a nation. And that's what personally I would like the Sables to do just to bring us back together we face you know difficult challenges in our country but sports is something that can bring us together and I'm just hoping that you know Sables rugby will be one of those sports to do that Z Ah, my captain, your captain, the Sables captain, Hilton Mudaruki. We thank Hilton for taking the time to speak to us. And I don't know about you, but I'm certainly inspired. I look forward to seeing the exciting brand of rugby that the Sables team is going to play. I look forward to seeing the day that they'll qualify for the Rugby World Cup in France in 2023. I'm speaking things into existence. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. We've got to go. We'll be back on Monday. So I have a pleasant Workers' Day tomorrow. I know some of you call it May Day. We'll leave you listening to the sound of Mac Merson. It's Hilton's throwback pick, Return of the Mac. <laughs>